What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Tesla Canadian Dad. Today, we have a big episode. It's been one year since I bought my standard range plus, and it's time to review it. So first things first, range is king in the EV world. I'm sure you've heard a lot of people say exactly that same thing. But if you are like me, and the only option to get inside the Tesla world is the standard range plus, is that the right decision? Especially in climates like me, where I have summer season, nice, okay. But I also have fall and cold winter seasons. Is the standard range plus the right car for you? Let's get started. So I'm gonna break this video down in different segments. You can take a look at the bottom of the screen here to see exactly what's coming up. Uh, if you'd like to fast forward to a certain spot or rewind to another spot. All right, guys. If you are watching this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button as well as the like button, especially that like button. It really helps the algorithm out. And we put a lot of time and effort inside these videos. So I appreciate it. If you just hit the like button, let's get started. So the first section here is performance and performance is a non-issue on this car. Okay, zero to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Is it as good as the other models? Obviously not, but it's insanely fast compared to any car I've ever owned before. And if I ever need to pass a car, pff, that's a breeze. Just bam. And you know, so when it comes to the acceleration, it's still fantastic. Still has that, oh, that's awesome feeling. And uh, you know, as my daughters say, it never gets old. <laughs> so I can still put a nice big smile on your face, even on those rainy, gloomy days. Now, as for the handling, this is actually something that I put in sport mode myself. There's three different modes of the Tesla Model 3, and I tend to drive on sport mode just for uh, a little bit more fun, controlled feeling when it comes to curved roads and things like that. So that's just a preference thing. But when it comes to the performance, overall, I have zero issues with this car. It just handles like a champ. Now, the next big thing for me was safety, okay? I have a, a nice little family here and I want to keep them safe. And safety is very important to me. And the Tesla Model 3 was rated the safest car in the world. This is not just me. This is, again, this is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. They rank the Tesla Model 3 as the safest car ever tested. That's pretty good. Now, a big reason for that is because, of course, there's no engine in the car and the trunk, which is the front trunk, Okay, if you don't like the word front, that's okay. But yeah, because the front trunk is replacing the engine, all that area can be squished, if you will, and take the blunt of the impact instead of the cabin. And nothing gets pushed into the cabin. So again, that is a major reason why the Tesla Model 3 is so safe. And other EVs are also so safe. Now, when it comes to the battery pack, it's actually at the bottom of the car and it's so heavy that it makes this car highly unlikely to ever flip as well, as I mentioned in some of my other videos. So of course, those two things make a major impact on how safe this car is. So all in all, it is a very safe car and something I'm very comfortable for me or my wife to drive with the kids in the car, knowing that they are in a very, very safe environment. Now, one of the things that a lot of people talk about is the self-driving autopilot. How safe is that? So I have a few stats here from Tesla. One accident every 4.53 million miles when autopilot is engaged. One accident every 2.27 million miles when autopilot not engaged, but active safety features are active. One accident every 1.56 million miles without autopilot and without active safety features. Now the average accident in the United States is one accident every 479,000 miles in the US. You're telling me that autopilot isn't safe? It is eight times safer to use autopilot than your average car on the road. You might be nervous about it at first, but I drive with autopilot on 80 to 90% of the time. More and more as FSD features get released. More eyes on the road is never a bad thing. I have two, the car has eight. That's 10 eyes instead of just two. Think about it. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is software. And updates, updates, and more updates. You 
can always wake up one morning with beautiful notification that your Tesla Model 3 has received a software update, which means new features for you most of the time. So how many cars have you ever owned that got better after you purchased it? Well, this car is significantly better today than it was when I purchased it a year ago. Why? Because of these software updates. My car is actually a little bit faster because of software update. My car has more range because of software update. My car has more games, a dozen of them to be exact in the past year. Now when it comes to range, it actually went from 354 kilometers to 402 kilometers EPA range. So that's a significant boost just with software updates. Now obviously there's new updates that improve autopilot and full self-driving features, but more on that later. We have YouTube, Netflix, Smart Summon, more cameras when backing up on our screen now. We have the left and right pillar. Uh, if we want to have more views backing up from different parking lots, that is now included as well. Text messages coming in from your phone. I know that should have been a feature from the start, but hey, this is my point. If we want features and Tesla hears about it, they are more likely than not to add it down the road and make your car a more enjoyable product. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. The more updates come out, the better your car gets. And every time there's an update, it feels like Christmas morning a little bit. You know? Like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go for a drive. I gotta go out there and just, let's go to the mailbox. Nah. That's not far enough, you know? Let's go get a coffee. Now, let's, uh, let's go see the new Amazon warehouse that's, you know, 40 minutes away just because you want to drive the car more. I guess also listen to Ride the Lightning podcast. But still, I just always want to go back in this car for a drive because it's just so enjoyable. All right, all right, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get back to the features. Let's get back to the review. So the next thing I want to talk about here is range. Now, the 402 kilometers EPA, that is what you're supposed to get in perfect conditions. You don't really get that. You don't really get 402 kilometers, okay? So I've never actually driven my car to 402 kilometers. It's just never happened. So it's 402 kilometers enough here in Canada. The short answer is most likely. Obviously everybody's different but most likely. Now, if you work 100 kilometers away from your house and you commute over 200 kilometers, that's where I might be starting to ask myself, okay, maybe I should save up and buy the long range Tesla Model 3 down the road. If you drive less than 200 kilometers a day, then there's this, this is a no brainer, okay? If, for example, you can't afford the long range, as I said earlier, if you can forge the long range, buy the long range. But let's be honest, you're here because you wanna know if the standard range plus is really an option for you. Because the long range is just, just a little bit outside what you can afford. So is the standard range plus good enough for you? Most likely is my answer. I travel to different cottages throughout the summer and I have no issue getting to them. Which brings us to our next category, charging. Charging, charging, charging. I am shocked, I am shocked that some of you still have no idea how many superchargers there is out there. Tesla superchargers, meaning you can charge your car from zero to 100% in less than an hour, but most likely you are stopping for 15, 20 minutes to charge your car and then you're on your way again. There is more and more Tesla superchargers every single month, weeks even. There is a ton of level two chargers available all over the place. Take a look at PlugShare. If you're on the fence, you're like, I can't charge my car here, here, here. Download the application PlugShare. No, this is not advertising for them. It's just a fantastic application that you can download to see where you can potentially charge your Tesla Model 3 and other EVs. There is a ton of different places you can charge your Tesla Model 3 
if there's no Tesla superchargers available nearby. Obviously, if there's a supercharger, you want to go with the supercharger. It just charges significantly faster. Last resort, there's a ton. Hotels have them, restaurants have them. I've seen a pool hall have them. I've seen a bowling alley have them. I love going with cottages. And my cousin has a cottage about 150 kilometers away from my house. And uh, going there and back, the way I like to drive, I like, you know, I do like my quick acceleration. And I do enjoy using that power the car has. So I definitely do not get the 400 kilometer range. Once I get to the cottage, guess what? I just plug it into a 120 volt outlet and let it charge while I'm there. And guess what? More likely than not, my car is gonna be back up to 90% before I know it. And then it gives me the freedom to go wherever I want. So when it comes to charging, some of you, for example, in Canada, wanna do a road trip all the way down to, let's say Walt Disney, maybe next year when the COVID is all done, hopefully. Hopefully I can surprise my kids with that. Anyways, if you intend to do road trips south, there's no lack of superchargers missing. So there's no issues there. The only way I can see you having issues with buying a Tesla Model 3 is if you commute more than 200 kilometers a day during the winter times. We're gonna to get to that a little bit more, a little bit later in the video. Another concern would be if you go north. North might be a problem because that's where we have a lack of superchargers. That's also where we have a lack of charger level twos. Just take a look. Take a look at the supercharger map online. Take a look at PlugShare and you might be surprised how many options there is out there to charge your Tesla. All right, I digress. That was a little bit longer than I wanted to uh, for the charging part. But my point is, don't be afraid to buy an electric vehicle, especially one with such a fantastic charging network as a Tesla. I charge my battery at a level two in my garage every single day and every single morning it's fully charged to what I want. Most of the time I charge it to 90%. Yes, I know some of you out there are saying 85%, 85%. Well, Elon Musk said it's fine to charge to 90%. So I go ahead, drive to 90% in case I need it that day, I have that extra 5%. Yes, before you head out on road trips, you are more than welcome to charge to 100%. You're just not supposed to charge 100% on a daily basis or leave your charge to 100% sitting there. After that long segment, let's go for a quick one here, maintenance. Well, it's, it's pretty simple. There's barely any. Um, windshield washer and new tires because i'm in canada i need winter tires let's let's recap let's recap windshield washer winter tires that's it that's what i've put into that car maintenance wise since i've owned it which is no oil change i won't have to change my brakes for any time soon some people who've owned a model s since 2012 have yet to change their brakes why? Because of regen braking. Now, when I did buy the car, there was a few quirks. For example, the window on the right side would not actually come back up. It would actually stay stuck at the bottom, the closing window button. I had to hold it to actually bring the window back up. So guess what? I took out my phone, I went in the app, and I scheduled an appointment for them to come to my house and fix that. That's right. They came to my house in my driveway to fix my car. I've never had the opportunity to say that before. Another thing that makes Tesla so special, in my opinion. One thing I do want to talk about about maintenance is if you are debating buying a standard range plus, if you're debating between 18 inch and 19 inch wheels, I would really be careful about buying a 19 inch over the 18 inch because of maintenance, okay? What am I talking about? If, from discussion I've had online with other Tesla Model 3 owners, from different researches I've done as well online, the 19 inch tires seem to get used significantly faster than the 18 inch. So you are looking at replacing tires more often if you go with the 19 inch tires. Also, the 18 inch are their standard. So you don't have to pay more for them. Might be even a smoother ride as well. So to me, it's a no brainer to go with the 18 inch over the 19 inch. But hey, do what makes you happy. I just wanted to put my two sets in there. I'm not gonna lie though, the 19 inch rims, they, they just 
they look really nice. All right, so let's talk about the full self-driving. This is something that obviously has improved throughout the year that I've owned the car. Autopilot was an option when I owned the car and then FSD features, full self-driving features, slowly rolled out throughout the year. From Smart Summon, where the car will actually come to me from any parking spot, to uh, recognizing street lights and stop signs and actually stopping at them. Now, as of today, you cannot sleep while driving your car. That is still not a thing. And you don't want to. You always want to be paying attention because autopilot and full self-driving are still being tested and even though full self-driving autopilot on a highway is almost bulletproof you still want to be paying attention but one thing that those features do for you is on long drive you don't have that road trip drain once you're done driving you know because you need to be on a hundred percent of the time when you're driving especially when you have your family in your car with you you're on and they're now they're talking and arguing well having this autopilot and even the fsd to change lanes and automatically get off the highway and switch between highways for you even though i'm still paying attention it does remove that tiresome feeling you have at the end of a long road trip now when it comes to smart summon it's something i actually don't really use but i do use summon all the time so that's one thing if you are debating buying fsd as of today the $10,600 price tag is a steep one. I'm not gonna lie, it's a steep one. I kind of wish they kept it cheaper for you guys because I want more people to buy it because it's a great feature package and it's something I wish that all Tesla owners could have, but it does come as a steep price. Now, if you are debating getting it in the future and you're debating keeping your car for a long time, I do highly recommend it. But if you think you're gonna sell your car in a few years, or you're just not sure about it, you can definitely hold out and potentially buy it later on. There's supposed to be a subscription base coming up later on. That's probably gonna be pretty pricey. I'm thinking probably over two, it has to be, it has to be over $200 American for the subscription base, month to month basis that Elon has been talking about. He said it's gonna be more than if you financed it on your car. So you're probably looking close to a $300 tag in Canada. But that is completely just a guess on my part. Now, Elon has said that full self-driving features like turning at intersections. Um, is there anything else? Roundabouts. I have a lot of roundabouts here uh, around here. They are supposed to be released this fall by 2020. But now that's Elon time, meaning it could be delayed. But one thing about Elon time is that yes, actually his timeline might not be accurate, but the features do come out. So when he does announce something, it does come out just might be a little bit late. So those are some of the things to look forward to at the end of 2020. So if you're thinking about buying a Tesla now, um, and by the time you own it, there might be even more features that came out for the full self-driving. All right, let's start talking about specific seasons. Let's start with the summer one because it's short and sweet. Summer seasons, this car just shines. It's just, it's just wonderful or nothing that it would change about this car in the summertime. It's just fantastic. And one thing that doesn't get talked about enough and I'm shocked how little amount of people actually talk about this. It's the one foot pedal driving. That's right. In the summertime, because of regen braking, it regenerates energy to the battery, which makes your battery last longer. But it also slows down the car, meaning I almost never have to hit the brake. And that's why I never have to change the brakes or not for a long time anyways. And not only is it great for my energy consumption, but it's also very convenient when you're driving. I mean, it almost feels like unnatural to go and use that brake again. I think that we should be talking about one foot pedal driving a lot more. Now, regen is not 100% available at all times throughout the year. And that's why I'm putting it in the summer section because during the summer seasons, it's available all the time. Now this is where you actually see regen being not as efficient as in the summertime for the first five minutes of your drive. Then your battery heats up and regen becomes available again. Other than that, when it comes to the fall season, there's not much else to talk about. I mean, you can enjoy the beautiful leaves here in Canada. Great. But it also means winter's coming. Not so great. 
All right, let's get to the next big one. And I do have a full video about just the winter driving and you can watch it up here. But I'm gonna wanna talk about it again here because it is a big concern for a lot of you. Range is king. And the standard range plus has the least amount of range out of all the Tesla Model 3s that you can purchase today. I don't wanna talk about the actual standard range. Okay, that's, ah, oh, they don't even wanna sell that car. So the standard range plus 402 kilometers EPA. Is that enough for my winter drivers out there? Like I said, if you're driving, I'm talking commuting less than 200 kilometers a day. That's a no brainer. Don't worry about it. Okay. You're going to have plenty of range. The thing is, if you do drive more than 200 kilometers every single day. Now, again, I'm not talking about on days where you want to go shopping after work or uh, you want to go to a different place after work. You'll most likely have that range most of the time that probably 280 to 320 range throughout the winter depending on the days it's the bad days that you need to worry about now there's not a lot of bad days less than you actually think that anxiety that range anxiety i only had it twice okay i had it twice and uh, the second the, the, the first time is because i lacked experience and didn't know my car and the second time was legit because i decided to go to the united states uh while <laughs> in the middle of a snowstorm on a really bad day. But other than that, no range anxiety during the winter whatsoever. Oh, I just remembered one. It's 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 not really a, a one I wanna talk about on the video, uh, but I was at a hospital. That, that changed my charging habit, I'll just say that, okay? Um, I changed from charging at three o'clock in the morning to as soon as I plug my car in, it goes to 85%. And then right before I go to work, it charges that last 5% to heat up the engine. We had an incident. I had to go to the hospital in the middle of the night and uh, driving back with my brother. Uh, it was a little bit, uh, you know, uh, that's the lowest I got my car to actually. I think it was like a 5%. And yes, there's still some extra juice in there, but that's, that's the big, <laughs> I was looking at that percentage nonstop. All right, so let's get back on track here. During the winter season, most users lose about 30 to 35 percent range on average on the cold winter days on the worst day where it's snowy and it's really cold some people in canada have reported losing up to 45 percent range i've never came close to that not even close okay the reason is i do park my car inside a garage at home and i do park my car inside a heated garage at work that dramatically reduces the effect that the winter season has on my car. So on average, I lose about 20% range during the winter time. On the worst days, I go to 30 to 35. Most of the time, I have around 320 kilometers of range every single day, which is way more than I need on your average day. The only thing I don't really do is road trips in the winter. So if maybe you're a skier or something like that and you like to travel, just, just take a look, but there's a there's a good chance there's a charging option for you at the ski hill somewhere. You could be charging your car while you're skiing, most likely for free as well. So all this to say, if you think about it, if you have 402 range, you lose 45% on the worst days. It gives you around 220 kilometers of range. As you commute more than that. That's where I would recommend for you to wait. Unfortunately, I know it's not easy. Save up and find a way to buy the long range Model 3. Some days I'm like, I wish I bought the long range over the FSD package. And then other days I'm like, no, I have all these extra features that I use on a daily basis. So I go kind of back and forth on that one. I definitely do. Do I wish I had the extra range? Yes. Do I wish I had the extra sound quality? Absolutely not. That's not my thing. Do I feel like I wanted my car to go faster? Sometimes. Sometimes. Not when I'm actually driving. More when I'm having a little bit of fun by myself. Ooh, that sounds bad. All right, we, uh, we've uh, gotten to the bad part. Uh, sit down because uh, it's not good. It's not good. 
Now I'm just messing with you guys. My biggest pet peeve, <laughs> it sounds crazy, okay? But my biggest pet peeve with this car is the little sounds, the little squeaking sounds. All my other cars had this as well, but I didn't pay this much money for my other cars. So I, I've never spent that much money on a car before. For the price I paid, I feel like that shouldn't happen in a car this, at this price tag. Another thing is I love my white seats. I have a line now on my seat where the seat belt, and it looks like it's just, it's using the feather, the fake leather, and then you're seeing underneath it. So you can't really wash it off. So I did buy a solution for the girls in my back seat. A nice little cover that they can actually use for a pillow as well on long road trips. So next thing I want to talk about, and this is something that they probably will fix. I miss regen like crazy in the winter season. I love one foot pedal driving. And even though on long drives, it does come fully back. At the start of my drives, I barely have any regen braking. And one of the things that they did, Tesla did for the Model Y is they introduced a heat pump to keep the battery warm in the cold winter seasons. That apparently does help with battery efficiency as well as regen. So I really think that they should introduce this into the Tesla Model 3s for any future Tesla Model 3 owner. They should have that heat pump in there. All right, on a little bit of a liner note, we have the software bugs. There's not many of them and they tend to get fixed. That's about it. So all these little bad things, would they make me not recommend this car? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This is not just the best car I've ever owned. This is the favorite product I've ever bought. It brings me joy. And I've never been a car guy, yet I am now. I know more about other cars now than I did before because it woken up this, this passion of mine I didn't even know I had. Hell, I'm making YouTube videos about it because of how I feel like it's such a great product that everyone out there should know how great this product is. This car is full of technology. There is a bit of a learning curve, but man, once you learn everything this car has to offer, you will never be able to go back. One thing I like to say is going from a Honda Civic, yeah, that was my old car, to the Tesla Model 3, it's like going from a flip phone to an iPhone 10. Not an original iPhone, an iPhone 10. Just like I wouldn't go back to my flip phone, I don't want to go back to my Honda Civic. So if you're on the fence and you're thinking, should I get the Tesla Model 3? The only question you should have is what color you want it. Love the white interior. Even though there's that little issue with the back seat, I highly recommend it. It's not as messy as everybody thinks. I carry around baby wipes in my car and whenever the girls make a mess or even the wife or even I make a mess, you just wipe it down. Boom, super easy to clean. Hey, so if you are placing your order, consider using my referral code on the link below. Uh, again, uh, you'll get yourself some free supercharging and uh, I wouldn't mind that free supercharging as well. I would actually appreciate it and a chance at, you know, potentially winning a Model Y for the wife. That's always nice. Winning a Roadster. Man, 1.9 seconds. 1.9 seconds. Zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds, the Tesla Roadster. Anyways, one can dream. That's it for this episode. I really appreciate you guys watching. I really hope you consider subscribing and smashing that like button. That like button helps the algorithm out and helps this channel out. So I really appreciate you hitting that. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you in the next episode. This was a long one, put a lot of time into it. So if you guys wanna share this video with people, I really appreciate it. And hopefully you have a little bit more information about the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus and if you should be purchasing this car. All right, we'll see you next time.